Hello darling, it's been so long since I've made a sewing video so I thought it's about time. I usually don't have any spare time on my hands because I'm always so busy with uni, which technically I am very busy with uni. I'm in the middle of my semester, but I just couldn't wait any longer. I had to sew a dress. It's been so long since I've made something and I just had to do it. In today's video, we're going to be making this lovely dress here in a two-tone fabric with a white bodice and a green skirt and belt. And it's actually a wrap dress, which means that you pretty much put it on like straight over your head and then you wrap each bit around you and button it up at the back. I thought I would make this dress because I really wanted to make it in white and green, but also so you guys can follow along with me and you can make it too. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing I did was lay out my green fabric and my pattern pieces and pin that all in place. So I did that with my green fabric and my white fabric as well. Once I've pinned that all in place, I then go through and cut that out. And I usually like to cut my fabric with pinking shears. So they have little jagged edges on them. And that means that you don't actually have to finish your garment for certain areas where you would usually overlock because not everyone has an overlock on hand. So it's easier to use your pinking shears for finer woven fabrics. But if you do have a looser weave, something that is a little bit more frayable, you can't really use pinking shears for that. You've got to use an overlocker. After I've cut out my fabric, I like to use Taylor's chalk and I mark all of the little notches where I have to match up my fabric together after. And then I also cut out little triangles for the other little notches on the fabric. And honestly, pinning pattern pieces and cutting it out feels like it takes me all day. That is my least favorite part about sewing. It's so time consuming. So generally after that, I have to try and hype myself back up before I get into sewing. And I usually have a bit of a dance break. And then after that, I then get into ironing my fabric. You can iron your fabric, before you even start cutting your pieces out. But I find that fabric is just so big and so long that it can be kind of inconvenient to try and move that all around your ironing board and get everything. So I cut out my pieces beforehand if it's not too wrinkled and then I iron everything after I've cut them out. Now that we've done all of that, we can move on to actually sewing the garment. And the first thing to do with this pattern is to sew in the darts on the bust front. And with sewing darts, I like to use a little vintage tip that they always put in these patterns. So you start at the edge of the fabric with your dart and you continuously sew up until the point where you need to stop, but you don't back stitch on that little spot. You just sew straight off and then you can tie that. And so that technique prevents any bubbling on the fabric and puckering up where you don't want it to look puckered and untidy. And then I also did the exact same on the back. I sewed in four lots of darts. I also did a line of stay stitching on the bottom of the bodice and that helps the whole garment to stay nice and flat and flush once it's all sewn together. Around four or five o'clock in the afternoon is my favorite time because the sunlight is always so beautiful as it comes through the window. You can see the shadows of the tree branches and the sun is just so lovely and warm and it just lights up the whole room. And even outside, the clouds were so pretty. As it got later into the afternoon, the clouds were pink and fluffy and they looked like cotton candy. And I almost forgot to mention that I also cut out interfacing for the lining pieces for the bodice and the back. There are two strips down the back of the skirt that we put interfacing on because that's where we put the buttons in place and you need something that's a little bit sturdy to have the buttons against, otherwise it will just pucker. The interfacing that I was using was a light interfacing, but you can use a medium. This is just feasible interfacing. You just go straight ahead and iron that on and make sure that the shiny side is pressed against the fabric and that seals together and is permanently there. No matter how many times you wash it, that interfacing is gonna stay there. After I've done all of that ironing and attaching the interfacing, I then went ahead and hemmed my sleeves. I just did a double roll for hemming the sleeves and I sewed that all down until it reached the sides. So now that the bodice has the darts in it, the shoulders and the back have been attached, we've hemmed the sleeves, we can then move on to attaching the facing. So we're going to be positioning the bodice so it's right sides facing out, and we're going to be putting the facing onto the bodice on the outside. And we're gonna sew that down around the neckline and around the back of the dress, 
and then we're going to flip that to the inside of the dress so that will hide any seams and the neckline will be a little bit sturdier than if you didn't have any facing there. But when you use facing in any type of garment, in a dress or a jumpsuit or anything, you need to make sure that you understitch. If you don't understitch, the facing is going to pull out and pop out of your garment and you don't want that. So all understitching is, is pulling the fabric apart and right near that seam that you've just created, you're going to stitch right next to it and that stitches right over the raw edges underneath and that holds everything in place so that it doesn't roll over onto the right side of the fabric. It makes the world of difference under stitching when you have a lining or any sort of facing in a garment. Then the next thing I did was I attached the facing to my belt and then I ironed up one side. I then attached the piece that didn't have the interfacing onto the front of the bodice. So then I pretty much did the same thing with the interface belt and I attached it onto the inside of the bodice and I did the same thing, sewing it down along the rounded part of the belt. And then I sewed down on each end of the belt so that when I flipped it round the right way, that results in a clean finished edge because all of those raw edges have been tucked up underneath inside the belt. Oh, and yes, it was at this point that I felt like I was literally just going back between the ironing board and the sewing machine. I was doing like one row of stitching and then I went back to the ironing board because I had to iron that. And then I went back to the sewing machine and then back to the ironing board, back to the sewing machine, back to the ironing board. <sighs> this is what happens. <laughs> This is what happens with sewing projects when you want to do it well and you're doing the ironing because they're like, okay, press this, but then they're like, oh, you need to sew this down. Oh, but press this. So it's kind of a little bit tedious, but it's well worth the effort when you get to your finished product and it looks like something that you could buy from a store because it's so well presented, so beautifully ironed, and it just looks like a million dollars. So once I had the belt attached, I moved on to my skirt pieces and I attached the interfacing along those strips at the back and then I folded those over and pressed those down. Like I said, I was back at the ironing board and then back at the sewing machine. Um, and then I took that piece over to the sewing machine and I sewed down the center front because we have a seam at the very front of the dress. Once I'd done that, I could then attach that to my belt piece. So for this, I flipped my dress inside out so I have all of the darts, I can see all of the raw edges inside my dress and I attached my skirt inside out onto the belt and I pick up the fabric so that I'm sewing that so all the raw edges are facing towards me so that when I turn that round the dress is completely finished from the front there are no raw seams or anything and the skirt is perfectly fitted into the belt and the bodice and everything. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and slip stitch the inside of my dress along that belt line. But that was a job to do for the next day because it was late by this point and I wanted to go to bed and have a good sleep. So the next morning when I woke up, it was such a beautiful day. The birds were whistling in the trees outside and I actually saw some little baby birds that were sitting in the tree chirping away, waiting for their mom to come and feed them their breakfast, which was absolutely adorable. And Mabel and Maud were happily pecking around outside, finding worms for themselves. And yeah, it was just a lovely sunny day and I was ready to get into some more sewing. So the goal for the day was to do the finishing touches. So that meant tacking down the facing, hemming, buttonholes and other little fixtures that I needed to put on the dress before it was ready to wear. So I sat down while I had a cup of tea in my breakfast and did all of those hand sewing things that I can't do on the sewing machine. I then tacked down the facing into the bodice at the shoulders on the inside. So that means that the facing doesn't fall out of your dress. It's held in by a couple of little stitches on the inside. I then noticed that the pattern actually calls for a piece of elastic and a hook and eye for the closure for the back of the dress when you're pulling it around to the front before you actually wrap the front of the dress around and doing it up with buttons at the back. So I found a piece of elastic, but you know, it was on the thicker side. It should really be about half this thickness. So I hand stitched that in place, then went ahead and sewed in my buttonholes and attached my buttons. I like to attach my buttons by hand and do my buttonholes on the machine. I just, I'm not really comfortable with using the like mechanism thing that you put into the machine and program it to do. So um, I prefer to do things a little bit old school and manual by doing this, but I know that it works. If you are confused with buttonholes, don't worry, go watch a video on it 
and it should give you a step-by-step -step breakdown. I'm sure there are lots of videos out there that will talk you through the process. And if you are confused further and you know everyone's sewing machine is different, go ahead and read your manual and see what it says in there for buttonholes on your machine. And then after doing the buttonholes, I went ahead and cut my dress. I just hung it up on my mannequin and went around and made sure that it was all the same length because I did just cut out what the pattern called for and I am a little bit of a shorty so I needed to take it up a fair bit so I cut off that and then I went ahead and hemmed the dress after that. I sewed it on inside out and then flipped it around so that tucks in and it's a neat little corner on the bottom of the dress and then I went and hemmed the rest of my dress and you can either just fold it straight up in one piece and sew that along as long as you've either overlocked or used pinky shears on your fabric and if you don't want a raw edge like that you can double roll it so that it's completely neat and it means if your dress blows up in the wind or you see the inside of your dress while you're walking it is all lovely and clean and neat and to wear this dress like I mentioned before you bring the back to the front and then you bring the front of the dress to the back and that does up with buttons at first it seemed a little bit confusing to me. I was looking at the pattern like, how the heck do you wear this dress? It seems very complicated, but it actually makes a lot of sense in the end. And it's actually a nice dress, something that you can make adjustable. You can move the buttons so that it can fit you at different points in your life if you're pregnant or if you've just gained or lost weight. I think it's a great dress, a great all-purpose dress and something that's really comfy as well. You can make it casual to wear at home or you can make it a little bit extravagant to wear out. There are lots of different things you can do with this dress. You can add some embellishments along the bodice. You can add a bit of piping or a trim in some little loops or a little fancy pattern. There are quite a few gorgeous vintage dresses. Something that Ethel actually wore from I Love Lucy, she had some lovely loops on the front of her bodice, which was what I took inspiration for for my black and pink dress. You can make your own unique pattern or piping that you can attach, or you can buy some sort of cording and put that on. You can really make this dress super cute. You can turn it into a whole outfit by coordinating it with a bag and gloves and hat and even making a cute matching headband to go with the colors of the dress. So I have some final thoughts for the finished dress. Some things that I want to do differently next time is adjust the bodice. I picked a size that fit my waist, but I didn't have a look at the bust measurements. You can probably see from the videos that you just watched that the bodice is quite baggy and I already did put in some darts on the sides to try and make it a little bit more tapered, but I think the problem is that it's, it's too big up here. It just has a very wide neck, so I think I'm going to alter the shoulders so that it fits me a little bit better. And one more thing that I would change about the dress is with the buttons on the back, the first two are perfect, but the third button kind of sits over the round part of your bottom. So I don't know whether they took into consideration that it's not exactly flat back there. If I button up this button with this buttonhole, it sits up because obviously all of this white part of the dress is pushed up because obviously it has to fit over your bottom. <laughs> so yeah, because I don't want that sitting pocket, I've just undone that. Really, you probably don't even need three buttons, so I would just leave the third button out and it just has a nicer finish without that. But overall, I'm really happy with the dress. If you decide to make this dress, make sure to let me know over on my Instagram or let me know down in the comments here on YouTube. I would love to see your finished dress. I love my dress so much and I just want to wear it everywhere. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were able to get a little bit of inspiration from it. And maybe if you haven't sewed before, maybe I might have inspired you to think about sewing or even buy your first sewing machine because it's heaps of fun. Anyway, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh. Oh, gosh! <laughs>